Well, you've come more than to hear Brother Jim give you a word of exhortation. I know you came to hear from the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to again in faith, release our faith because uh, it is the entrance of God's word that giveth light, giveth understanding to the simple. In fact, uh, Pastor B.B. Hankins would say the Holy Ghost is a genius. And if you listen to him and follow him, people think you're smart. And really, he'll make you look smart because you're following a genius. The Holy Spirit is a relationship genius. He's a financial genius. He's a, even a political genius if people would listen to the Holy Spirit. In fact, uh, in our U.S. history, uh, you know, history records that before the signing of the Declaration of Independence, there was a lot of fighting there in the city of brotherly love in Philadelphia. <laughs> And it shouldn't have been, but all the delegates were shouting at each other, fighting each other. And finally, Benjamin Franklin gets up. And, uh, you know, he's 81 years old. And he said, gentlemen, what we need is three days of fasting and prayer. Get our hearts back right with God. And bring, bring peace back. And from that time of seeking the Lord, instead of fighting each other, yelling each other, calling each other names, the Holy Spirit humbled them. They forgave each other. And uh, he brought forth the declaration, the uh, signing of uh, 1776. Praise God. Declaration of Independence. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, thank God for wisdom. We uh, had a message for you this morning. Didn't really get to get it out, articulate it. But the, the Lord inspired me to this title, Keeping Your Joy in Turbulent Times. Keeping Your Joy in Turbulent Times. And so... Uh, we're, we're following the Lord. We're being led, endeavoring to be led by His Spirit. And uh, the uh, flight attendants sometimes tell you, you know, the captain turns on the fasten seatbelt signs. Fasten your seatbelts. And they say, you may experience some turbulence. But is, everything's all right, you know. And the captain comes on there. His voice almost puts you to sleep. Greetings from the flight deck. This is Captain So and So. The weather in your destination is a balmy 67 degrees. The winds are north northwest, and it's just a real calm peace. But uh, when you hit those pockets of turbulence, uh, it's almost like uh, sometimes being in the dentist chair and grabbing hold of that armrest. You know, and just it's like you might feel a little pinch here, and uh, you know, you know, you just don't like that turbulence. But the Lord, He ministered to me on. Uh, if we'd follow the word and follow his spirit, we could keep our joy even in turbulent times around us. Now, uh, go to Psalm 1 this evening, if you would, the first psalm. And uh, the word of God tells us if we're going to keep our joy, what to avoid. And you know, there's some things that you should avoid. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for the word tonight. We thank you, Lord, and ask you again for utterance in the Holy Spirit that I should open my mouth with boldness, speak the word as I ought to speak it. Clarity of thought, mind, purpose, and intent to lead, uh, be led by the Holy Spirit and to hear from heaven the word of God that would strengthen our faith, that the people of God may be fed, nourished, strengthened uh, and fully equipped to stand against all the wiles of the enemy. And having done all to stand, to stand therefore. Thank you, Lord, for those that are called salt and light in this present age, those that you've reserved, not to wrath and judgment, but to obtain grace and mercy and your peace through our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. So we thank and praise you for the wisdom of God. Help us, Lord, to walk in it, to operate in it at a greater measure, and not just as a matter of intellectual knowledge, but as a matter of daily walk with you. We thank you for the privilege. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? Now, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, so number one, when we need advice, you know, the, the Charlie Brown cartoon, <laughs> Lucy would put up a little stand 
and says, psychiatric help, five cents. <laughs> yeah. You know, the Word of God tells us, we don't, we, the, the blessed man does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Why? Because they don't go to the Word. I said, they don't go to the Word. They, they might quote it as some poetry, but they don't live by the Word of God. Amen. And uh, so we don't walk in that counsel. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Or thirdly, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. You ready for the amplifier? I like this. Did, did you know I shared this with you before? That there were theologians that argued that hap, uh, blessed does not translate happy. But it does. If you look in the Hebrew and the Greek, blessed, and even in the message in Matthew 5, the Beatitudes, you know, Jesus said, blessed is this man, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the pure in heart. Uh, that means happy. That's right. The Lord wants you blessed. And the Lord wants you happy. And He wants you to bless you with things that you can't get at Super Walmart. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Joy. Somebody say, joy unspeakable. Full of glory. Do you know people are wanting the manifestations of the glory of God? He tells you where it's at. Christ in us, the hope of glory. He said, there's joy unspeakable. It's in the Holy Ghost. You know, sometimes I just, I mean, the Lord just, you know, like a dad plays with his kids, tickles a kid. The, the Lord would just put that tickle fit on me. Sometimes. I said, Lord, what's that for? Well, I needed it. I was just too serious at that time, so I just had to laugh a little bit. So happy, fortunate. Oh, here we go. Prosperous and enviable. I don't understand if people argue against prosperity. Poverty is under the curse. Not having enough to pay your bills is under the curse of the law. Study Deuteronomy 28. I don't have time, but... The, under the curse is poverty, sickness, and premature death. Well, thank God Jesus redeemed us from it. I said Jesus redeemed us from it. Enviable is the man who walks and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly, following their advice, their plans, and purposes, nor stands submissive, now listen to this, and inactive in the path where sinners walk. Amen. Amen. You know, there's a concerted effort by some in, they, under the guise of political correctness to silence those that would speak for the Word of God. Amen. But the Word of God said, the happy man does not stand submissive and inactive in the path where sinners walk. Amen. Nor sits down to relax and rest where the scornful and the mockers gather. Oh, that church. You're always at that church. All your money goes to that church. Are they still preaching over there? Are they still out there? Yeah, what about it? I mean, if, you, if you're not supporting it, what's it to you? Amen. You, you know, the guy that's out there doing it gets a lot of criticism from the people on the sidelines. People got their big HD TV sitting on their couch talking about what the quarterback should have done. You let some 300 pound guy come at you full force and see what, you know, I'll sit back on my TV and say, now, now, you, now you zigged when you should have zagged. In other words, it's a lot easier sitting on the sidelines and criticize somebody that's, that's in the heat of battle. <laughs> Amen. Preaching good. I said preaching good. So we don't we don't uh, relax where the scornful and mockers gather. Now you ready? His delight is in the law of the Lord. So not just a daily devotional, but you, you know, like some people look forward to dessert. Some people look forward to. I, I had some people show up as soon as they got to work. They said, "What time's my break?" I said, "You just you just got here." What do you mean? What time's your break? You just you just walked in the door, and uh, you know they look forward to payday. 
But the word says, the happy man, the blessed man, has a delight in the law of the Lord. The Lord obviously, <laughs> doesn't take a lot of discernment, I need help. <laughs> so help me, Lord, to see what I don't see and to make the corrections I need to correct. You know, the proverb said that, that the wise man gladly receives correction. But the fool just says, I'm going to do it anyway. Well, you keep running that brick wall, it's going to knock you out, knock you down. <laughs> Instead of, you know, doing something great, you're making a Three Stooges show because you keep running into the same brick wall. Amen. His delights in the law of the Lord. In his law does he meditate day and night. His delight and desire in the law of the Lord, on His law, the precepts, the instructions, the teachings of God. He habitually meditates, ponders and studies by day and by night. God said, now you really don't want a king. Then Israel said, yes, we really do. And God said, no, you really don't. And they said, yes, we do. And they argued with Him. So sometimes if, you know, the Lord says you don't need some, you don't have to press it. So finally God said, well, this king's going to tax you and he's going to take all the best. And he said, well, if you do have a king, I want him to read the law of the Lord every morning. Have you read that? That the Lord said that? You haven't read that? Well, you can look it up, isn't it? <laughs> and, 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 and there was uh, kings that neglected that. And they just sought to govern out of their own understanding. And so I prayed. I said, Lord, this nation needs a president that reads the word of God. Before it does anything, wakes up in the morning, reads the word of God and prays for wisdom, direction and guidance from the Holy Spirit to govern this nation. Amen. I said, amen. That's mighty bold, preacher. Well, that's, that's, that's my prayer. It's been my prayer for several years. So I just believe in God for that. And I don't believe the Lord's done with the United States of America. That's right. Amen. You know, we, we have purpose from God to be a light to the nations. So, his, the precepts, the instructions, the teaching of God, he habitually meditates. Remember Daniel, Daniel just, he did, you, you know how you, sometimes you're in the middle of eating lunch, you, didn't, you said, how did I get here? You, you didn't even think about it. You just had something in your brains at lunchtime. You went wherever you got your sandwich. You, you, you thank you, Lord, for this food. And then you're just eating it kind of. But, but it's a habit. That's what I'm trying to say. And you, you got to dinner right in the middle of dinner. You're not even thinking about it. Well, this blessed man, this happy man, he, he's in the Word. Habitually. What are we trying to say? There's good habits and there's bad habits. So if you want to live the joyful life, get it, get over into the good habits. Amen. Hallelujah. You ready for the, you're ready for the, the, uh, I, I read some quote today. It said that, uh, you, you are free to, what did it say? You are free to choose, but you're not free from the consequences of your choices. <laughs> Somebody said, I can choose what I want. I can choose what, yeah, you can. But, you know, there's consequences, good or bad, to what you choose. So, uh, listen to this. This is awesome. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You've been out there to uh, Mount, uh, no, Zelia Garden? What's it called? Botanical Gardens. And the Elizabeth River, those trees, they lean towards the water. Go see them if you haven't seen them. There's some trees that just go straight like this, and there's trees that lean toward. They got their roots in that water, and they're like, I, I'm not going to be a dried out tree. <laughs> Why be a dried out Christian when there's rivers of living water that flow from the throne of God, and your roots can be in that? And, and whether it's raining or not, you, you got a supply that never runs dry. Come on, preacher. <laughs> So some people are wondering, where does that supply come from? It comes from the Word and the Spirit. This, this blessed man that avoids the ungodly advice, hanging out with sinners, 
standing with the scorners, delights in the Word of God, meditates in it. Brother Hagin would say that over and over. Because it's so many people, you know, you know, those that didn't criticize him about faith, teaching on faith all the time, they, they said, How, how'd you build your faith to that level? And he said, I'd, I'd, I'd mutter the word. I'd speak the word. I'd, I'd pray in other tongues. I spent, he said, I didn't just let time go by. I spent time in prayer. I spent time in the word. I'd speak the word. Amen. I said, Amen. So the, he shall be like a tree planted by the river's water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. And that's what you need. You, you know, in the time before Samuel, the prophet came on the scene, the time, the time of Eli, the Bible said the word of the Lord was precious in those days because there was a famine for the word because people had turned their backs on God. <clears throat> So, so I always say that a, a natural famine is preceded by a spiritual famine. So, so, and you know, if you're if you're in a right relationship with God, you have a you have a natural appetite for the Word. When your Word levels low, you said, you know, I need some more Word. Things are irritating me; they shouldn't even get to me. I need some more Word in my spirit. I need a buffer of the word. Amen. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. If he opens a subway, it's going to prosper. If he, what, what, whatever this blessed man, whatever he does, if he has a Burger King, it's going to prosper. If whatever he does, if he works at a Dillard's, that, that store, He's going to prosper. Mm -hmm. The blessed man. Amen. I said amen. You, you know if you walk in the precepts of the word, there, there are even Christians that will shake their head and, and say, how, how are you doing? How are you walking on the water? How are you doing that? Yeah, that's true. And, and it's really, it's not a mystery. The word will work for anyone. Amen. Who should ever will? In any socioeconomic sphere, in any geographic sphere, if they'll take the Word of God and by faith begin to walk in it, the Word will work for them. And the Word is working for us. So the ungodly, by contrast, in verse 4, they're not so, but they're like the chaff which the wind drives away, that they dry up. I was uh, honored again to sit with Dr. Pat Robertson and, and glean. And you know, you know, just sitting there sometimes just in conversation, you know the Spirit of the Lord will come on him, he'll prophesy. Now he won't, he won't go into something where he is something fancy, but the, the anointing come on him and he'll just prophesy. I mean, he'll, and I'm talking about fourth tell into the future. And I, I, I just write down everything you say. <laughs> but he said this. Because I, I got to ask him a question. And I just said, Dr. Robertson, what, what is your, your secret to longevity in ministry? Because you know he's coming up on 85. And he said, well, the Lord has shown me things, you know, about health and nutrition and taking care of this temple of God, you know, et cetera, et cetera. He said, but the main thing, the main thing, that the Lord has brought me to a place or I refuse. And he said, actually, I, I think I've almost, it seems like, become incapable of holding a grudge against anybody. And he said, he said, he, and then he sat there and thought about it, and he said, actually, most of the mean people that came against us, he said, they're just not here anymore. So why, why you know, waste your time being angry at them anyway or holding a grudge against them? Forgive them. Just forgive them like the Word says and move on with what God gave you to do. That's a good word. Praise the Lord. It's better to walk in health than to be bitter. All right. That's a good word. So the uh, ungodly are like chaff. They have no root. 
and also they have no endurance. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. There, there's no fool in God whatsoever. He knows the way of the righteous. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. Actually, the Amplified said that those living outside of God's will shall perish, end in ruin, and come to naught. So in other words, those that live outside the will of God, they try to be a thorn in your side, a thorn in your side, but actually, they're going to come to nothing. Psalm 37 says that. Not to fret about the evildoers. Amen. I said amen. Amen. Now, uh, look at, uh, for time's sake, Joshua 1, 8, please. Deuteronomy. Wait a minute. Joshua, Judges. Joshua. How many of you know Joshua had a large leadership assignment to fulfill? How many of you would have liked to follow Moses? Follow, be the next leader after Moses. <laughs> well, they all respect Moses. Who, who's this guy? Well, notice the wisdom that came from God concerning leadership. He said in verse 5, There should not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Now this covenant talk. That's God's covenant with Joshua, but it's also his covenant with us. That's New Testament talk. The Lord said, I'll not fail you. I'll, not, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Right? Well, that right there gives you hope. Amen. That right there gives you hope. Be strong. Somebody say, be strong. Amen. Look at your name. Just say, be strong. Amen. Amen. That's, that's why we need to assemble together. You, you need to tell each other that. We need to exhort each other. Be strong. Be strong. And of a good courage. Courage is good. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. So God, Jesus Christ, who's the Alpha and the Omega, He's the beginning and the end. God tells them in advance His destiny, which is His destination in God. And that's why He said in fulfilling my calling, no man will be able to withstand, to stand before you, or in other words, to, to withstand you. Right? Well, you know, Peter, the apostle, bless his heart, he thought that he was just showing his loyalty to the master. And, 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 he, and he said, uh, you know, when Jesus told him, he said, he said, I have to go to the cross. And after three days, the Lord, you know, I'll be raised up. And remember, Peter, remember, Peter got so emotional. He rebuked him. Remember that? That's in the Bible. He rebuked the Lord. No, not so, Lord. Not so, Lord. And what did the Master say to him? Get thee behind me, Satan. Because there was, you know, without knowing it, he was, he was an obstacle to the cross. And he thought he was doing something good. But Jesus knew he had to go to the cross because of the sins of the people. Amen. Not, there's not been a more courageous man that's ever walked the face of the earth that's right. than Jesus. That's right. uh, we've had courageous people, but nobody even approached it. He knew ahead of time the will of the Father and still came and did it. Not only said, I'll come to do thy will, but did it. And I was, I was walking through Target. I was meditating on this. I said, the, the caliber... 
and the fruitfulness of the Lord's ministry in three and a half years. How fruitful it was. I said, Lord, I, I don't just want to, you know, have so much time in ministry on a resume. I want to be fruitful in the man. Bear fruit. Not waste time. Not chase, you know, people's ideas. But follow the will of God. So anything that you perceive in your spirit, even though, you, you know, the, the, the disciples, you know, the Bible said they didn't say anybody challenged them, but I'm sure they wondered, why, why is he so harsh with Peter today? How I many of you know, that's a, that's a strong rebuke. Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those things that be of men. That's a strong rebuke, isn't it? And a lot of people said, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm out of this church. I'm done. Pastor can't talk to me that way. But, but how many of you know Peter received the rebuke and kept on following the Lord? I don't know why I got off on that, but it's true anyway. And then look at Peter then and then go over to 1 Peter and just read the very the first part of 1 Peter 1. Where God brought him from, from where he was, because he kept following the Master. Oh, where God brought him to. 1 Peter 1 is awesome. <laughs> it is. It's like, man. So they're there to uh, maintain joy in turbulent times. Is, is to continue to follow the Word and to follow the Spirit of God and to follow those that are following Him. Paul the Apostle said, follow me as I follow Him, as I follow Christ. Amen. So this counsel came to Joshua and it's pertinent, it's relevant to us as a word in season for 2015. Only be thou strong to the church and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. Why? Because there's going to be a dissenting opinion. There's going to be others that say, that's not necessary, we don't have to do that. That's, that's just an antiquated book. Nowadays, we're, we're enlightened. How many of you know, you, you, humankind will never get to a place where it's smarter than God is. <laughs> I don't care how many computers they make in Silicon Valley. Amen. You, you know all that's doing is trying to catch up with the knowledge that God already has. <laughs> and it's just a fraction of it. In fact, I mean, there, there's things He doesn't share with us because it, it, it literally would overwhelm us. I mean, it'd be, it'd be staggering for one person. Amen. So He... You, you know, kind of like in an eyedropper, you, you give a little bit at a time. It's a little bit of formula, a little bit of milk at a time. The Lord does that with us till we get to a place where we can receive it. Amen? Some people get mad at that. I think it's, thank God for it. <laughs> I said, thank God. I, I'm so glad that, you know, 25 years ago, He, did, he didn't show me <laughs> some of the things. <laughs> Because then I, I just said, you're kidding, like, no way. But thank God He brings us to the place where we can overcome by faith. Now church, be strong, be very courageous. Observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Now get this, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. So in other words, we shouldn't get weaker in faith for salvation. We shouldn't get weaker in faith for healing. We shouldn't get weaker in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Are you here tonight? Don't, don't turn from the Word to the right of the Lord. Well, everybody else is, you know. What did the Word say? Don't you turn from it to the right or the left. How many of you, you, you all know that nobody else is going to stand and give an account for the assignment God gave me I'm the one that has to stand before. I'm, no, there's no, it's going to be me to give an account. 
for what he assigned me to do. And it's going to be you that gives an account for what he assigned you to do. But what about brother so-and-so? No, no. It's... Yeah, but Lord, no. We're the, we're, we are the ones that have to stand before him. Amen. Some of it's going to be good. Some of it's going to be eternal reward through the ages to come. And some of it's just wood, hay, and stubble. Stuff that didn't mean nothing. <laughs> Amen. Now you ready for the finale? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Meditate it, mutter it, speak it. How many of you know when things don't seem to go our way or challenges or trials or tribulations, it, it seems difficult to speak the word at that moment. Sometimes it's challenging. Are you here tonight? But you, thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do. So number one, it's got to be in your mouth. You got to be speaking the word. Number two, meditate on it. Meditate on it. Marinate on it. Meditate on it. That you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. That's the will of the Father. He wants all his children. Not, not just some of them to be super prosperous. Some of them to be a little bit prosperous. He wants us all to be prosperous. He wants us all to have good success. He don't want us envying nobody, covetous of anybody else, but all to enjoy good success. All prosperous. All blessed. Amen? So here's the Rx. Here's the prescription. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. The Holy Spirit, give us the word in season. Whatever it is, whatever the scenario is, that the word would come forth. The word would come forth. I've, I've had to, I, I've literally taken whatever, my wallet or checkbook, whatever it is, I've spoken the word right to it. Amen. I've had the, you know, the thought came right away. That is the most silly thing. That ain't going to do nothing. You're in big trouble this time. What are you going to do now? The faith man, what are you, what, what you going to do now? I mean, the thought will come. Are you here tonight? I know you know what I'm talking about. And the word said, what does it say? 2 Corinthians 10, 4. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Bring in captive every thought to the obedience of Christ. Well, the thought would come. I'm taking the church checkbook. I, 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 and I got this from Norval Hayes years ago because he said that uh, some bill came up in the ministry. And this was years and years ago before they were established. And uh, he told the secretary, well, write the check. And she said, Mr. Hayes, I can. He said, why can't you? He, he, he didn't understand. She said, sir, there's 18 cents in the ministry account. <laughs> he, said, he said, cancel all my appointments. I'm going before the Lord. Amen. Amen. So there was a test. And... Uh, at, you know, at the time he was sharing that, he, he said that uh, after that, he would pray in the Spirit. And he would just, he, he'd be out driving somewhere. And the Lord say, pull over to this, I'm going to show you this property. And it'd be a sale sign on it. And the Lord said, I want you to buy this. He said, for what? But, you know, what am I going to, you know. And the Lord said, I want you to buy this piece of property. Whatever, how many acres? He said, okay, Lord, okay. He called whoever it was, set it up, said, purchase it. And through the process of time, the Lord said, now, now I want you to sell that property. Put, put it up for sale. And he said, uh, he left one closing several 
$100,000. The Lord blessed him with it. He said, Lord, why would you bless me with something like that? He said, who am I that you would bless me like that? But the Lord said, when I called you into ministry and I told you to go out, you know, to these poor places and not just witness, but feed people, you know, bring them food. He said, you did that for seven years. So he said, when there was a need later in your ministry, I knew you, you would obey. And then he said, now, now take the proceeds, because he got a big check. I forgot how many hundred thousand. And the Lord said, I want you to sow that over here. He said, the whole thing? The Lord said, the whole thing. And then he said, he was sharing with us. He said, is that how this works? And the Lord said, yes. <laughs> and it came into his hand for a short time. The Lord said, now sign the back, sign it over. Sow it here. That's how that works. It's another level of it. I said it's another level of it at giving and receiving of Philippians 4. But if you'll be led by the Word and the Spirit, you'll not lack for anything. No matter what it looks like. God will always come through. The Word will always work. And even sometimes it seems like it's at the last moment. But God's always right on time. Right on time. Before you even know you need it. The Lord's already provided. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Malakura Bria Kalamasu. Mela Broko Tula Bria Nama. Skora Bria Master Bria Namba Dola Bria Nama Nasa. Robro Kida Master. Nema nala bosukida. Nema mala bosukida bala basu toluri aso. Breda, 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 breda. Ha ha ha. Siba bala. Siba bala. For do not despise the day of small beginnings. Though the season seems long, yet God has a purpose and he has a plan. <coughs> So though it seems to start small, stay faithful. Oh, and the rewards of those who stay faithful and diligent to my word. The Lord says, I will reward you with things that money cannot buy. Oh, and your joy shall be full if you'll follow me. And not turn to the right hand or to the left, but be led by my word and my spirit. And I will establish you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I, I have a sense of that because I haven't thought of that story in, in years, actually. But that, that's for somebody. Brother Hayes' testimony. And the opportunity will come. And the Lord will give you discernment for the right one. The right one. And in His time, and he'll, you'll have peace. You'll, you'll know in your spirit that this is the one. This is the one. Amen. And you'll also know, no, no, that's not it. That's not it. But you'll know from the Holy Ghost. Confirmation. Yes, this is the one. This is the way. Walk ye in it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For my sheep hear my voice and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. I said praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, that's not peculiar. That, that you could speak to finances. The Brother Hagen, he, he yes. said the Lord gave yes. him that revelation. Claim what you need yes. out of this world system. Yes. And then uh, command Satan to take his hands off of your finances. 
and then loose the ministering spirits to go forth and cause the money to come in. And then thank God for it. And so we've been in faith at a certain level of this ministry for, you know, several years that, that we've done that. And then I was watching Brother Moore's uh, week of increase because we weren't there in Branson, but I was watching it. And he, and he exercised that. He said, God wants us to uh, switch over to all HD camera equipment for the television program. So he said, we need $750,000. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bind Satan off of our finance. We claim 750000 out of this world system. And we thank you, Lord. Loose the ministering spirits. Go forth. Cause it to come in. In Jesus' name. Well, it's working. The word is working. I said the word is working. It works for us right here in Virginia Beach. <laughs> Amen. Claim what you need and sow the right seed and it'll, it'll come in. Every time. Amen. Are you blessed? Like one pastor asked, who's the happiest person in here? You're full of joy and all that said, that's me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ha, ha, ha. Only takes one check to come in to come out of debt. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I like what Jesse Duplana said. He said, you can have faith to pay it every month or the Lord just pay it off. I said, well, thank God for that. I'm not, not complaining, but, but thank God for the other blessing where it's just paid off. Move on to the next project. That way you don't have to wait 30 years. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we want to we wanna bless you. We do this in the day services. Why don't you please stand as we dismiss. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. And may the Lord bless thee and keep thee, and the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. We pray the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be strong with you all, that you be strong and of a good courage. <laughs> In Jesus' name, amen. We call you blessed. We love you. Have a wonderful week.